Amazon is trading at 40 times free cash flow today at the same level that it was in 2010. And according to many people on X, on YouTube, now is the time to invest in Amazon. You cannot go wrong with this company. It is growing at such a fast rate and probably investing in it will yield you the same returns as if you had invested in 2010. These people are going to tell you that it is like investing in an index fund. It is so diversified. But the reality is that Amazon is not that diversified. It's just two businesses, retail and AWS, Amazon Web Services, Cloud Computing. And to understand why I say that investing in Amazon, which is a company really will be growing. In five years, my minimal requirement is for a company to double its intrinsic value. It can happen, it will happen with Amazon, definitely. But why I'm not going to invest in it? Let's look at the balance sheet. Many people like to look at the income statement for Amazon. It is doubling its revenue every few years. That's great news. But what does the balance sheet tell us? If we look at the growth in book value of Amazon, the book value doubled in three years. That's 25% in a year, which is great. But you need to look at the source of this growth. There are two ways to calculate the book value. The one that most people use is to look at the total assets and the total liabilities. The difference, this is the book value. But there's another way to calculate the book value of a company. Because it is a balance sheet, it has to balance. And this is on the equity side. The total equity, that is the book value of Amazon, really doubled in three years. But it's not really just because of retained earnings. It's also because of additional paid-in capital, which increased by a lot. So what is exactly additional paid-in capital? It is all additional shares being created. And in the case of Amazon, it is through stock-based compensation. Employees are paid by stocks. You may say that there is nothing wrong with that. A company paying stock-based compensation, it is actually saving the cash. If let's say, instead of paying stock-based compensation, they were paying employees by cash, then the retained earnings would have been lowered. So it makes no difference at all whether the company is issuing shares or paying through retained earnings. And, and if a company wants to grow, it wants to maximize the efficiency, it wants to increase the cash. But there is always more certainty in cash. You don't know five years, 10 years from now, how much the company is going to pay its employees by issuing shares because it is so easy to issue shares. It is harder to pay by cash. When there is cash, you have more certainty. And if you're investing in a business, you want certainty. You want to know five years, 10 years, 20 years from now, how much cash the company is generating, not how much shares it is generating. If 5% of the book value increase was coming from shares, I wouldn't mind, but 50% is a lot. Amazon lost money in 2022. The retail earnings went down, but the additional paid in capital is still increased. So if we have bad years for Amazon, we have recessions, yes, the retained earnings will be going down because the company will be losing money, but additional paid in capital will still increase. So you don't know, it all depends on the stock price also because there's so much uncertainty. When we are saying that the price to free cash flow ratio is 40, in reality it is 80 because half of the earnings are going to employees. Now let's say you don't think this is important because in today's day and age, companies having low book value doesn't matter. Most of the value of Amazon is in its growth. It's in its brand, which you cannot put a value on the balance sheet. Like Warren Buffett likes to say, the book value, this is the past, but the value of the company is in the future and Amazon really is growing at a fast rate. But here's another issue. At what rate is it going to grow in the future? Because if really you're going to discount those future earnings, which is the way we calculate intrinsic value of a company, you have to assume growth. And assuming 10%, 15%, 25%, and for how many years, it makes a big difference. You cannot say that Amazon will grow earnings by 25% annually forever. The intrinsic value will be infinitely big. Now you can say, okay, it will grow by 25% for the next five years, then will be lower by 10%. As long as you use a discount rate, which is higher than the 10%, then it won't be infinitely big. But still, someone else can say, it's going to grow at 5% instead of 10%. Maybe you may say it won't grow at all, which I prefer to do. I prefer to be conservative. And you have to include the risk of an antitrust Bro, maybe Amazon is going to be broken up. And finally, the third point I want to make why I won't invest in Amazon, it all comes to those 
earnings. How Amazon is generating those earnings? We said Amazon has two businesses. That is the retail business and AWS. But what happens when there is a recession? Both businesses are going to lose money. Even if people say that Amazon is a recession proof business because people are always going to use AWS, always going to shop on Amazon. But even great retailers like Walmart, their margins compress during a recession. The same thing is going to happen with Amazon. Because margins for Amazon are so low, they are definitely going to lose money during a recession. And you have to include that in your calculation of the intrinsic value. And you never know when a recession is going to hit. But there are signs, there are always signs, and this is by the number of stocks you're following. If you're following many stocks, based on what's happening to their earnings, based on what's happening to other fundamentals, you know that probably there's going to be a recession. And how do you get knowledge about these companies? It is through City Falcon, which is today's video sponsor. On City Falcon, you can filter the news that you want to get on any companies, on any industries. I don't like to focus on the news to make investments, but if you can filter the important things, the things that are important for you, then you can estimate maybe there is a higher probability that the economy is slowing down. Maybe I should wait a little instead of making an uncertain investment like Amazon. If you use the promo code ISHFAC, you'll get 25% off any subscription of City Falcon. Coming back to Amazon, this is another uncertainty, recessions. This is a company that is going to lose money in a recession. In 2022, the company lost money. Because the margins are so low, any major event, financial event, may cause the company to lose money or the profits are going to be very small. You have to include all of that because when we are calculating the intrinsic value of a company, it is all the future earnings. And future earnings include earnings or loss during recessions. And in every five years, you'll have at least one year of recession. And this brings more uncertainty to the intrinsic value of Amazon. Even though the intrinsic value is going to grow at a fast rate over time, because of all this uncertainty, at current price, I don't see the value in investing in the company. You need to look at all opportunity costs. There are other investments out there that are better than Amazon, in my opinion. It all comes down to what Aesop said 2,600 years ago. One bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. And in the case of Amazon, you don't know how many birds are going to come to you, how many birds are going to the employees, and how many birds are there really in the bush. The birds are multiplying at a fast rate. Yes, you can be sure there are many birds, but I would rather own the birds in my hand for now at current price. This is the same argument I made about PayPal. I said that PayPal is not going to increase intrinsic value by 15% a year and that there are better alternatives. If you are interested to know why I sold my share of PayPal, I will recommend you watch this video next. Have a nice day and goodbye.